it's, a, it's hard to know where to begin today. So let's begin with Scripture, what Jesus said. His words set the stage for what we're here to do. He said, I am the resurrection and I am the life. And those who believe in me, even though they die, yet shall they live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. He said, I'm the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. I died and behold, I'm alive forevermore. And I hold the keys of hell and of death. And because I live, you shall live also. Let's pray together. Lord, you've already set the stage for today. You lived, you died, you live again, you live still. We don't need to invite you here today because you're already here. But what we would ask is that you be our guide in this time of worship, in this time of remembering. What we would ask is that, is that you would turn your Holy Spirit loose in these moments and help us to hear what we need to hear and experience what we need to experience and to walk out of here today different than we walked in, closer to you. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. My name is Aaron Brown. I'm the lead pastor at St. Paul's United Methodist Church. And I welcome you today in the name of Jesus Christ. And I want to encourage all of you at the very beginning here to continue to share your thoughts um, about Will on his Facebook page and on his uh, YouTube blog. Um, put your comments there because the family in the days and weeks ahead, they're going to be, they're going to be looking at those. And, and those will be very cherished memories. So continue to do that. And just keep the love flowing toward Will's family. Um, of course, there's no way to capture somebody's life in, in the small amount of time that we have today. There's just no way that we can do that. But what we can do in the time that we have is get a glimpse of God. And we can get a glimpse of God's perspective on life and death. And what we can do is celebrate the life of Will Lord. And right now, it's important to acknowledge some things that... We're all facing this mix of emotions. Probably the most overwhelming is deep grief. We grieve at, the, at, at Will's death, at, at the life of a young man that's been cut short. And the world has lost an amazing, loving, faithful person, and we can't help but grieve. But we also have to acknowledge that, that hopefully there'll be these glimpses of joy in the midst of the grief because, well, because we know that Will is with Christ. We know that we'll live a good full life, even in 18 years. Listen, today it's important that we get it. Um, Jesus came to earth to make sure that, that we got it. He wanted to tell you and me and the whole world, death doesn't win. Death doesn't get the last word. Don't be afraid. Jesus is saying, he wants us to get this. I'm opening up eternity for Will and for you. Come follow me, and I'll show you the way. And I'll be your guide. Death for a Christian is not the end, it's the beginning. It's new life. I feel like it's important to remind us today, as, as much as we love Will, that we're not here to worship him. We're here to worship Jesus and to remember Will and to celebrate his life and set it in a context, in the context of the life and death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. So today we thank God for Will, for the young man we knew as a friend, as brother, as son, grandson, nephew, in so many other ways. Uh, Will was on his way to Chapman University to study filmmaking, and um, he's got his own YouTube channel. If you haven't discovered that yet, you need to. Um, why don't you take a look at a short film that the family thought captured Will very well. Take a look. I just finished up my finals earlier today, so I'm out of school. I can't believe it. It's amazing. I can't believe it. I got through. I finished double. I got through. 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 I got through
yeah, I'm, um, I'm pretty excited.
Here's Psalm 139, verse 1 through 10. O Lord, you have searched me and you know me. You know when I sit and when I rise. You perceive my thoughts from afar. You discern my going out and my lying down. You are familiar with all my ways. Before words on my tongue, you know it completely, O Lord. You hem me in behind and before. You have laid your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me, too lofty for me to attain. Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I go up to the heavens, you are there. If I make my bed in the depths, you are there. If I rise on the wings of the dawn, if I settle on the far side of the sea, even there your hand will guide me, your right hand will hold me fast. Let's pray together. Father God, you came to us and you walked among us. You walked among us so that you would know what it's like to be human. You know what it, likes to, what it feels like to, to suffer, to hurt. You know what it feels like to grieve. You're always ready to hear even when we're not ready to pray or don't know what to pray for. You know what we need even before we ask. But we ask for now is grace, that as we face this mystery called death, that we might get some understanding, that we might get a glimpse, at least, of eternity. So talk to us, Lord, through your presence, through your word. Tell us again your understanding of life and death, and remind us today that nothing in life or death can keep your love from us. We need you now more than ever to comfort us as we mourn, to engage our doubts, to make us strong when we feel so weak, to forgive us when we sin. By your power and presence, build within us the love that's going to hold us together. In Jesus' name, amen. Dr. Kerry Saketa is the principal of Joplin High School, and I want to introduce him. Uh, he's going to be reading today um, and make a presentation, actually, and sharing from his perspective. Um, he had a unique perspective on Will's life. Dr. Saketa. Patricia, Mark, Sarah, family members, and friends of the family. Today we are here to celebrate the life of a son, brother, grandson, cousin, student, and friend. As the principal of Joplin High School, I can assure you, Tricia and Mark, along with everyone here, that Will, in every way, was exactly the type of student and young man of whom we can all be proud. As educators, we at Joplin High School know that what helped make Will the outstanding young man he was, was the love, devotion, care, and support from you and his family. I can vividly recall the day that Tricia and Mark spent time in my office when Will was considering transferring to Joplin High School. I remember so well the questions both Mark and Tricia had about our school. Questions directed about how Will would be able to fit into our school. Their questions were guided by Will's hopes and dreams for himself, but also their hopes and dreams for Will. It was obvious to me that Joplin High School was the right fit for this young man. When the decision was made for Will to attend JHS, he quickly made friends and found his niche in our school. In fact, he found a niche in every part of our school, in every group he joined. His creative talents were exhibited a great deal in our TV productions program. Not only would Will fit in to JHS, Will would be a leader at Joplin High School. He was grounded, intelligent, visionary, and very talented. His personality lit up a room. He excelled everywhere and in every way in our school, and his parents were behind him always. Will took advantage of every program or class offered that would challenge him and keep him engaged with teachers and friends, thus making his high school experience the kind all parents want for their children. On a personal note, I had the opportunity to work with Will in our office, and he was always humble, dependable, polite, 
service-oriented to everyone in town. As a school administrator, I can tell you without question that a senior class full of leaders is a principal's best set of friends at school. Without a doubt, Will Norton was a leader at Joplin High School. Will was a leader because of the way he treated others. And this was evidenced by the countless recollections from everyone who came in contact with him, from presenting teachers and counselors with small tokens of appreciation just for doing their job at school, he appreciated them, to lagging back in Washington, D.C. on a trip and filming his friends having their first experience in our nation's capital, and to chronicle their experience and to make sure they were the ones who had a great time. Will was the leader because of his commitment to excel and pursue his dreams through hard work, determination, responsibility, and creativity. He was on two school teams that earned the opportunity to compete nationally. His countless videos on YouTube made him very popular across the globe. And he set goals for himself and he achieved them. I have no doubt whatsoever that his college experience would have landed him immense success. And finally, Will was a leader because of his commitment to his school. This school year had been particularly challenging for me as a principal because of our preparation for our regional and nationally recognized accreditation visit. It was decided that in order to put our best foot forward to impress the evaluation team coming to see our school, that we would kick off the visit with a video showcasing the many qualities of Joplin High. We knew we needed to put our best man on the job because you never get to make you never get to make a, a, have a good first impression. Your first time has to be right. And we knew Will would be up to any task to help us school. Will took a written script. He produced video footage. He co-narrated. He edited an impressive final product that made our school come alive. He came in on snow days to finish the product. Little did we ever dream this would be the last video tribute we would have in the legacy of our building at 2104 Indiana. We'll capture Joplin High School, and who better to make the video for us? It was excellent. In closing, Tricia, Mark, Sarah, family and friends, at graduation two weeks ago, at about this same time, I was able to shake Will's hand for the last time after he was presented a diploma from our school. The diploma represents hard work, academic success, and his preparation for his life. I know as I stand here today that Will would want me to present you his diploma once again, to serve as a reminder to you the role you played in his life to help him be the man he was here on earth and now in the full service of our Lord. I pray that God bless you and your family. Rachel McNally is another good friend of Will's, and she's going to share a scripture from Isaiah 40. Rachel? Hey, everybody. Um, I have known Will for a very long time, and these last two weeks we've all been going back on memories and everything, and Everybody just seems to remember his, his smile. And we were joking about how he uh, brushes his teeth four times a day to keep his pearly whites, and how still to this day that's everything we'll remember. And so, even though this is a hard time, I know Will will always all keep smiling. So, I'm um, reading Isaiah 40, 28, 31. Do you not know? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He will not grow tired or weary, and his understanding no one can fathom. He gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak. Even youths grow tired and weary, and young men stumble and fall. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. 
They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint.
And um, one of my funniest stories with Will was uh, Gary Duncan was going to come and see us. He's the CEO of Freeman Hospital, the Gary Duncan. And I got my room ready, had the kids all programmed us what questions they were going to ask. And Gary finally showed up, and I introduced myself. And when I turned to introduce him to the kids, before I could even get a word out, Gary Duncan said, Will Norton, how are you, bud? I gave Will this odd look and he smiled back at me, but he wanted me to have my moment. And that was one of his special qualities that he never wanted to take that from anybody. Um, in February, Will nominated me for Golden Apple. He and his mom wrote the nicest letters. And um, before we went into the banquet that night, I got a text message from Will. And it said, um, good luck tonight. No matter what happens, we'll celebrate in class tomorrow. When I won that award, I, Will was the first person I texted, and my text said, Winner, I owe you a lot. He simply replied, Congrats, you deserve it. One thing about Will Morton, he always wanted you to have your moment. He always wanted you to feel good about yourself. Well, a day or two later, my picture was in the paper, and it was really a bad camera shot, and I had this humongous arm. I was shaking hands, and it was really a bad shot. So, um... Anyway, the kids were kind of passing it around, and I kept talking about my massive, humongous arm. And Will's response was, but Miss McGill, look how small it makes your body look. <laughs> Again, he always wanted you to feel good about yourself. Um, in April, Irina Taylor and I took a group of kids to stay at FBLA in Columbia, and we've made the trip at least ten times. Well, it was the day after Project Prom, and all the kids were sleeping on the bus because they had like one hour of sleep that night. Well, we got lost. And it was Will that woke up, got his phone out with his GPS, and led us through 27 miles in the country to get us um, there on time. When Jerry had his accident, it was Will that planned his welcome back, we're glad you're okay party. And the night before, it was Will that helped blow up a hundred balloons to fill his hotel room for Derek's birthday party. I have the, a really cute picture um, that I'll share with you sometime about Will. It, the whole group was on the bed with party hats and, and blow horns. And Will had on three hats, one on top and one over each ear, and a big horn out of his mouth. And that's exactly the way I remember him. He was never afraid to express himself. Um, they have a dance at FBLA State. And the advisors go to a meeting while the kids have this dance. And after the dance, my own daughter came back and she said, it was a blast. I crowd surfed. And I go, what? She goes, Will and Stuart just picked me up and I crowd surfed. <laughs> she said it was pretty scary, but what she remembered most that was when Will picked her up, he was dripping wet with sweat. <laughs> and I said, that meant he was having a good time, hon. Anyway, when I asked him about it the next morning, he said, I promise she was never in any danger. <laughs> she was the only freshman of the group, and one thing about Will is he wanted everybody to be included. It didn't matter what you looked like or what grade you were in, but everybody that surrounded him was part of his group. He was a big part of FBLA this year, and I know he was proud to wear those FBLA courts at graduation as much as I was proud of him for wearing them. Through the last few, few weeks, we've all shared um, new experiences of hope, and because of Will Morton, the word love has new meaning to me. Because of Will, the faith of many people have become stronger, not just in our community, but throughout the world and throughout the United States. If you don't believe it, just get on Facebook, read Aunt Tracy's post with 60,000 other people. I watched some of Will's YouTube videos this week, and my favorite one was when his family was on vacation in Africa, because he had told me the story that I'd never actually watched it. Um, I love the animation in his voice when he was describing what he saw, and the way he beamed with excitement when he talked about his sister, who was delicate and fragile, getting peed on by a baboon. <laughs> what a great role model you must have been for him. A few weeks ago, I signed Bill's your book. I wrote, go out and make a big impact on the world, Miss McGowan, senior 81. He thought that was pretty funny, and we laughed about my age, but boy, did he ever make a big impact. Even people that didn't know him across the United States, he made an impact on. So in closing, I encourage you to celebrate your life like Will Norton did. Let everyone enjoy their moment. Be confident enough to wear a silly hat. Don't be afraid to dance till you're dripping wet with sweat. Accept everyone the way they are and acknowledge them as friends and go out and make a big impact on the world. 
John 14, do not let your heart be troubled. Trust in God, trust also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, I would have told you. I'm going there to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that you may also be where I am. I would not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. Before long, the world will not see me anymore, but you will see me. Because I live, you also will live. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not be afraid. Take just a few moments and think about what first comes to mind for you when you think of Will. first comes to mind. I asked that question to his family, and um, everybody in the room, almost all at once, said joy, happiness, that Will was the most joyful person that they'd ever met, and they also said that his joy was contagious. They talked about how he loved everybody, how he treated people with kindness, and he never said a bad thing about anybody, and that's a hard thing to do. If you knew Will, you know that he was polite and respectful, uh, that's probably why his teachers liked him so much. Um, he had a way of bringing a light wherever he went. He was one of those rare people that kind of had that charisma that drew people in and made them feel comfortable and included. And I've heard about the Halloween party and how awesome that was and how it was just one more invite after another after another that he wanted everybody to be there. At, at six foot three, I think Will could have been pretty intimidating, but um, with his blue eyes and and often blue tongue from those sonic uh, waters, uh, drinks that he would drink. And he had this graciousness, this charisma, and he was anything but intimidating. In fact, uh, Will had an unnatural ability to be kind. Uh, his parents told me that when everybody else was, was done being kind to somebody, Will just kept on going. He was mature, wise for his age. Sarah said they talked a lot, that, that he would have the best advice about all kinds of different things. And that he was humble. They said that too, that even though he lived a privileged life, he was one of those rare folks that he didn't let it go to his head. He was modest and generous. He'd give you the shirt off his back. Unless it was a, a t-shirt from high voltage, then he might have, a, uh, have to think twice about that. Will, a.k.a. Will the Beast. He knew how to enjoy life. Uh, he loved the travels that he made with his family to Hawaii and, and Europe and Africa. In Africa, he, he got to witness the great migration of, of the wildebeest and the zebras. and It was a highlight of his life. Will enjoyed animals in general. He volunteered at the Humane Society. Um, he enjoyed his pets. Uh, I understand he had a parakeet and a, and a fish and gerbils and sugar gliders. Um, sugar gliders are these unique little flying squirrels that he had, and, and they're actually what, what uh, got Will started on YouTube. Um, and sugar gliders are really, really cute, but they have one drawback. Um, let me put it this way. Uh, leave it to Will to get a pet that's known for throwing its poop on people. Um, <laughs> Will didn't care. Trish did. <laughs> His mom did. Uh, Will enjoyed a variety of, uh, of Music, he loved Hackett's Hot Wings and Starbucks Grande, Grande White Mochas. He loved school. Um, they said that he was sad when there was a snow day. He loved making people laugh. He loved bringing people joy. Um, here's a montage of some of Will's videos. Take a look. What, 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 what can I say? August 19th, I turn 18 years old, which I will be an adult, legally. I'll still be a kid forever, probably. How crazy is that? That's when you say very crazy, bro. Oh, speaking of zebras, my dad and my entire family think it's pronounced zebra. And actually, all of my friends think it's pronounced zebra. But I grew up watching the Discovery Channel, and they said zebra on there. So I've always just said zebra and like zebra cakes and everything. It just makes sense to me. So I said, Dad, we'll finally figure it out. Um, if our tour guide says zebra, I'm right. And he's like, okay. And you have to buy me a Ferrari if I'm right. And he goes, okay. So 
there's the deal. I have three witnesses to this. He doesn't think so. Anyway, here's the car he got me. I'm totally joking. Uh, but no, that really did happen. He just didn't buy me the car. <laughs> We were going up to Ngorgo Crater, and um, it doesn't it doesn't rain there. You know, we're in the dry season; it's their winter there. And all of a sudden, some like liquid starts going coming in the the door of the cruiser. And so, like Sarah's like, "Oh, it's raining," and she shuts the window. And then we look up, and there's a baboon peeing on Sarah. How awesome is that? If you don't know my sister, she's very uh, fragile and delicate. So it was hilarious, and she just couldn't believe it. She was just peed on by a baboon. This isn't so bad. Nah, dude, it ain't that bad. It's pretty good to me. Nice day. Hey, crank that dance. Why me crank my Why me do? Hey, crank that dance. Why me crank my Why me do? Hey, crank that dance. Why me crank my Why me do? I'm, I'm, I'm in LA and I go, oh, hello, Los on Twitter, hello, Los Angeles, and a special hello to you, Kat Von D. So, I tagged her and I never, I always talk about her, I never tag her in it. The next morning I wake up with a tweet from Kat Von D. You don't, you don't understand, like, I was like, freaking out, like, it was, I don't think I've ever been that excited. I, I've, I've definitely never been that excited about someone speaking to me. Sebastian. Yes, Robin. Do you think it'll rain this evening? Huh, the clouds seem to be rolling through. I really hope it doesn't shower on a bit this evening. Oh, right! Is that the benefit for the retarded children in Botswana? No, you silly goose. It's the benefit for the, the African buffalo? <laughs> oh, the wildebeest! The wildebeest, yeah. Shall we ride together? Don't you think they'll look a bit dodgy? No. Shall we take the bins or the bin plate tonight? Oh, the bins. We want to be modest, of course. Of course. Of course is of course. Of course, of course. Of course, of course. Stop snowing. I don't even know how much we got. Ah. I named my phone Obi. You see, I had a gerbil once, okay? And he was he was black, and so I named him Obsidian, like the rock, like the rock that's black. Then, you know, I had a, a black dog. Her name's Fancy, but we didn't name her. If we would have named her, her name probably would have been something more sophisticated. Her name, you know, it probably would have been better. Okay, well, that was, that, that was a good video, good. Yeah, that was. Will knew how to enjoy life, didn't he? He knew how to enjoy life, but the biggest source of joy for him was his family. Trish said that just recently that the family was uh, going somewhere together, and from the back seat, uh, Will said, Mom and Dad, you're the best parents ever. He and Sarah were best friends. You know, Will was very rare in having this ability to, to be friends with his family. He loved you so much because, because he learned how to love from you. That's why he loved you so much. A mom who listened and cared, a, a dad who made his lunch for him every day. Well done. When I think about Will, I can't help but think about this passage from 1 Corinthians chapter 13, I think he lived this out, where it talks about what love is and what love is not. Paul's thinking about the cross and Jesus, but I think we see that love reflected in Will. It says love never gives up. Love cares more for others than for self. Love doesn't want what it doesn't have. Love doesn't strut. Love doesn't have a swelled head, doesn't force itself on others, isn't always me first. Love doesn't fly off the handle. Love doesn't keep score of the sins of others. Love doesn't revel when others grovel. Love takes pleasure in the flowering of truth. Love puts up with anything. Love trusts God always. Always looks for the best. Never looks back. 
but keeps going to the end. Love never dies. I think Will knew about love. And Will knew about faith, too. He was a Christian. Uh, he loved this church. Uh, he loved Jesus uh, through his D group in Christ and Youth. And he fleshed out his faith. That's where he came to truly really know and understand what his faith was about. But in his everyday life, he just lived it out. He just lived it. He made good decisions. And a big part of that was because of his faith. And he served people. He overflowed with his kindness and respect and concern. He, he didn't have to preach faith. He lived faith. The Apostle Paul uh, was writing to a young man about Will's age. He said this, Don't let anyone look down on you because you're young, but set an example for the believers in speech, in life, in love, in faith, in purity. I think Will did that out. Listen, if you look at Will's life and, and you're saying, Man, I want what he had. If you look at his life and you say, I, I want love. To receive love like he did. I want to love others like he did. I want that joy that he had. I, I want to be that positive, as positive as Will was. I want my, my life to make an impact like Will's did. If you look at his life and you want what he had, then, then follow the one he followed. I mean, you can follow all kinds of different paths in life. We have the choice. You have the choice, and I do. We can follow all these different paths, but the path that leads to life, the life that really is life, is Jesus. Will got it, and he want you to get it too. But here's where I gotta, I gotta talk about something because some of you right now are thinking, why would I want to follow the one that will follow? What good did it do? Will following Jesus? Jesus didn't seem to keep him safe. Jesus didn't seem to protect him from this tornado and this tragedy. But you know, Jesus never said that following him would would mean that he was your lucky charm, keeping you from harm. Jesus never promised that following him would mean extra safety or that life would be easy. No, Jesus never promised that uh, there would just be this bubble of protection around you at all times. Jesus never promised that life would be convenient or easy. Jesus simply said, I'm going to be with you. I'm going to be with you when life is good and it's bursting with joy. I'm going to be with you. And that joy will be complete, Scripture says. And, and Jesus says, I will be with you in your deepest sorrow, and I'll lead you out of it. He said, I'll be with you in life and in death. In Will's last moments, Mark said that he was just pouring out prayer and pouring out praise and pouring out Scripture. That's what was pouring out of him. Mark said that it was like God was right there with them. God is with you. Why would you want to follow the one that will follow it if it's not going to protect you from harm? Because living a long life doesn't mean that you have really lived. But living a life of doing what Jesus did, that's the life that really is life. Oh, and by the way, Will didn't die because God needed him in heaven. God's got plenty of people in heaven. And Will didn't die as a punishment for some sin. Read the book. Jesus took our punishment for us. Will died young because, you know, just being alive is, is risky. Life is risky. Now, please understand, that doesn't mean that we take unnecessary risks. You young people out there, please don't take unnecessary risks with your life. It doesn't mean that we're careless or stupid about our lives. It's just the opposite. We treat every day as if it's a gift. And at the same time, we know that this isn't the only life that we get. The key is to, to live life to its fullest. Jesus said, I have come so that you might have life and have it to the full. Listen, I think we can all say today, Will lived a full life, even if it was just 18 years. Because he lived every day with a sense that it was a gift. How many of us do that? He lived every day with a sense that, that there was a, an expectation that something amazing could happen in this day. Listen, Will would never want you to stop living your life because he lost his he would want you to get busy, get busy loving your friends and family and, and get busy connecting to Jesus and get busy forgiving offenses when people have hurt you. He'd want you to get busy finding some other cute animal that would throw its poop on you people, you know. Will would not want, want to be remembered as a young man killed in a Joplin tornado. That's not how he'd want to be remembered. He would not want to be remembered for how he died. He would want to be remembered for how he lived. 
was faith, was love, was compassion, was joy. For being a great son and a great brother and nephew and grandson and friend. Now, I know it's always dangerous to put words into somebody's mouth, particularly Will's mouth, I think. But I think Will might want to say to us today something like this. Stay positive. Be there for one another. Follow Jesus the best that you can. Life's too short to not savor the good stuff. I also think uh, if he were to say something to us today, he'd thank a lot of people for making his life what it was. Because of Christ's promises, because of Will's faith, uh, we know that he's in that place that Jesus went and prepared for him. And that's what Jesus was talking about. He says, I go and prepare a place for you so that where I am, you will be also. He's preparing a place uh, for you, for Will. And I, I like to think of that place as a home base from which we will start an adventure. And Will is in that place. He's just getting settled into his new life. He's getting ready for his new adventure. And because of what Scripture tells us, I think this is important as well. We believe that, that we live on with our identities intact in God's presence. That Will will be himself in heaven and will recognize him when we get there. Now, of course, uh, human images uh, really fail when we're trying to describe heaven. But I asked Will's family, what do you picture of doing, doing in heaven? And they said things like this. Making videos. Doing social media. Meeting his ancestors. Making friends. Let's know that whatever he is doing in his new life, he is with his Lord and Savior. Again, I have to say, Will's death is not an end, it's a new beginning. And it's that new beginning, that promise, that gives us some reassurance today. Knowing that one day, if we follow the one that Will followed, we'll be reunited with him. And even in our grief, and even in our loss, that's the good news of Jesus Christ. Life wins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's pray together. Oh God, you're gracious and loving. You comfort us. We realize that you didn't offer us a whole lot of explanations about things in life like this that we're facing, but you do offer us something even more important and significant. You offer us a relationship. We thank you for your word that gives us peace and comfort. And we've got to admit, it's hard to let go of will, but we know that he's now with you. He was loved by so many people because he, he shared love. He faced life with, with patience, and he faced life with strength and faith and gentleness and obviously a sense of humor. Above all, he faced life with love. When we look around, uh, it doesn't take us long to see that the world is a better place because of Will Norton. Lord, I would pray for every family member that's here and any that couldn't be here today. As they let go of a person that loved them so much, help them to know that he's now with you. Be with every close friend and just to continue to give understanding in these very, very tender moments. We thank you for Will's life, for the influence he had on so many others. We thank you for the way he shared his love and his joy and his strength. Thank you, Lord. We realize his journey's done here on this earth. But he really has started his adventure with you in heaven. And for that, we give thanks. In Jesus' name. Amen. Turned into wild and opened the eyes of the light. There's no one like you. There's none like you. And into the darkness you shine. But out of the ashes we rise. There's no one like you. There's none like you, our God. Our God is greater, our God is stronger. God, you are higher than any other. Our God is healer, awesome in power. Yes. 
into the darkness you shine out of the ashes we rise There's no one like you There's none like you Our God Our God is greater Our God is stronger God, you are higher than any other Our God is healer Awesome and powerful Healer, awesome and powerful. 